Now, that sh thing should update soon. That... <sighs> I've been online for over four hours now. Oh, my God. Almost four. Well, pretty much four hours, yeah. So I came in the office and I pretty much like checked a couple emails and then hit the live stream button. So you've, you've seen pretty much everything that I've done today. Um, so what you guys just watched was a Nementa research meeting. I'm the community manager for Nementa. We're a company um, dedicated to our, our mission is to understand how intelligence works in the brain. Um, and we're talking about real intelligence, like how are we intelligent? Not, um, uh, we're not, we're not looking for anything less than we want to understand AGI. I mean, I don't love using the term AGI because it's such like a weighted term, but that's really what we're trying to figure out. How are humans intelligent? How can we create human-like intelligence? How does it work in the brain? What is it in the brain that makes us, gives us this human intelligence, this ability to do what we do and makes us different from, um, non-intelligent life, like plants. I mean, there's a lot of animals that I consider are intelligent, but most of them have a neocortex or something like a neocortex or something that's evolved to do this rich modeling of, of objects in reality. I think that's what the neocortex is giving us, this ability to, to create a library of things, you know, relative of, of, uh, of like models of objects uh, from sunglasses to coffee cups to paint pieces of paper to democracy, you know. Just gives you a, a library, a, a way to create reference frames, you know, for everything that you can think of. It's all in your neocortex, all of this, all that stuff, all that stuff. Um, and anyway, we are, uh, this is, uh, we just started live stream a few months ago and, um, I'm trying to keep the stream open and I'm moving to the next phase of the stream, which means I think I'm gonna have to put my desk down. Bear with me for a moment. Get my whiteboard out from over here. It's very bright in this office, it's brighter than it seems. And now we're in building HTM systems. So we did half of this already. We did the research meeting. So the rest of this, and it's really only gonna be about an hour because I've got to go pick up my kids. It's early release day from school. School's almost out by the way, which is great. Um, uh, did, that, did you see that? Yeah, so that's what we're gonna be doing, building HTM systems. And um, I'm gonna, show my screen and pull this window over here so we can get to it. Where's all my windows? My windows, all my, all my Chrome windows just disappeared. No, not that. Chrome. They're all gone. I somehow closed them all. Oh, here it is. Here we are. Good. Because this is what we were working on before. Um, so a reminder for, or just a refresher for anyone new, who is uh, trying to figure out what we're doing. We're building a, a document. Now I killed the, I killed it. Uh, NPM run dev. We're built, well, it's, it's, a, it's an interactive document called building HTM systems. That's what we're building. Um, and I will paste a URL here. And actually I think I have a hot key, hot command for this, BHTMS. This is what we're doing. Eh, I need to fix that. It's not every Thursday, it's just whenever. <laughs> but um, there's the URL again, and if you missed it, no one before that. Uh, yeah, so also check out the forum if you're interested in this HTM stuff. HTM is hierarchical temporal memory. Um, and it is, uh, it's like computing like the brain. That's what we're trying to do. Figure out how sensory input is processed by the neocortex and what is that common cortical circuit happening in those six layers, six plus layers of neocortex and the, and the thalamus um, that is uh, allowing us to represent such a rich model of reality. And HTM school, that thank you. HTM school, I'm gonna put the YouTube link up. 
Um, I've got a bunch of videos on YouTube and all these Twitch live streams also end up on YouTube, usually, the, but the, the decent ones. The ones where I get things accomplished, <laughs> those end up on, on YouTube. The ones where, where I'm just beating my head against the computer for Brains. the whole time does not make it. Those don't make it sometimes. Some, some of them do. Hey, thank you for the follow. That was, I missed the name. D something, but thank you for the follow. I, I appreciate it. Um, I have a schedule. I'll, I'll let you see real quick. It, I really try and keep it updated. Although, um, so the next, the next broadcast we're going to do, we'll probably, I, I'm not putting the research meetings up again. Uh, it, I don't think I'm going to put them up anymore unless I'm certain they're going to happen because too many of them I had up here and they didn't happen. Uh, but I'm going to talk Tuesday. We'll have a little like AI chat at nine about um, these types of neural networks that are sort of uh, self-referential, like hot field networks, Boltzmann machines, and um, where in the brain those might be, those things might be happening. Um, uh, Mark Brown suggested that in the hypothalamus, I should look at that. So uh, maybe we'll, we'll think about the hypothalamus. Uh, as we're th as we're talking about that too, that'll be Tuesday, and I plan on ha there's probably going to be a research meeting Monday, but I'm not putting it on the schedule. I'm almost certain there's going to be one Wednesday, so it's on the schedule, uh, and I need to fill out the rest of these events. So, I my I, just look at my schedule too. Um, so, what we're doing right now is in, in the encoding numbers page. Oh man, this is too bright. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm closing this shade. Hold on a moment. I think I can t turn some music on again too, hopefully. There we go. All right, so I can only do this until uh, one o'clock, so I've only got like 50 minutes, but I'm going to try, I'm going to try and get um, another, let's see if I can play some music, please, honey. Is it actually playing? Oh, it's not playing. Uh, I could have been playing this whole time. It's okay. That's all right. All right. Sorry, too loud. Is that all right? Is that music okay? Okay. Uh, cells and gravity vectors. Yeah, that was an interesting research meeting. Um, I was very happy when they started talking about gravity because I, I think that's that's probably something our brain is modeling. You know, gravity is essential in how we interact with reality. The, the reality that we are exposed to, that we, how we evolved on this planet. There's always a reality. It's a, it's sort of a constant for us, like like the thickness of the air, you know. I don't know. It's probably something we're modeling. Um, where were we? So I had just uh, changed this, so this worked. That's right, and it, but it didn't really work. Like that that this sort of stuff happens, right? All right, so that's where we were, and. So the, um, it's not breaking the bottom. So let's try and figure out um, what's going on here. So we're not using, just so you know, if it, is there anyone in the house knows React, please raise your hand. If anybody in the chat room knows React, I'd really love to have someone I can ask something to because I'm, I've got a data interaction going on here with the user. Okay, so so I'm trying to make this a React component. Let me get my VS Code back up here. Uh, where the heck is it? There it is. So I actually have a simple scalar encoder React component. I'm planning on creating all of these diagrams as React components, and but most of them. I would say even all of them have some ability for the user to interact with them, change their state, which changes their, which updates the render. Uh, so that's what I want to do. 
And right now I'm not doing it in a React way. I'm simply like I'm calling a make scrubbable number. <laughs> and that's selecting everything on the DOM. Because here's the tricky part. The tricky part is all these semicolons. I don't want any semicolons. I'm anti-semicolon at this point in my life. I used to think, I used to live with them. <laughs> uh, sorry. Um, this is selecting everything that has a data name for this tag. Uh, I probably do need a linter. I, everything that has a data name for this tag, and it looks like this, for example. Here's, uh, where was it? Simple scalar encoder, bounded scalar encoder, example bounded scalar encoder, output range. This is the one we're working on. So here's, here's the trigger. I want the user to be able to grab this and change it. And that's what that make uh, scrubbable number does. Is it says, look for any data name W, here's its min, here's its max, make it scrubbable. This is precision. And I stole that. I didn't steal it. He gave it to me from Emil here on his excellent Red Blob Games um, tutorial. This right here. So he make this is public domain code. So he he I have I'm looking at it and trying to emulate it in a React JS way. So um, uh, there you go. <laughs> How does Neocortex process a flow of time? You have you need to watch HTM school. That's a, it's all about sequences, sequence memory, time. That's sequence. Time is think of it like this. Movement is time. Your brain understands time by moving. Movement is time to to brains. Time happens without movement, but you experience reality through movement when uh, that's one way that you experience reality. So when you're moving, your movements are synced to time. Uh, and your brain incorporates that in, in the way it models sequences, the way it models sensory input as sequences. Um, okay, so yeah, you want the variables to be accessible outside the React class. Yes, I want anything on the page that has this data name when it gets changed, I want every React component that has that property to update. That's what I want. We've got two totally different conversations. So you guys that are, I I'm fine with you guys chatting um, about whatever you want in chat, but I'm probably gonna try and keep my, I've got like 45 minutes now, so I'd really like to try and get this, this um, little data interaction done. Um, so I might not jump into the conversation, but absolutely have the conversation. Yeah, that's the, well, so David, you're right. It's the opposite of React, but how else can I do it? Like, all I really want is a component. Maybe it shouldn't be React then, because uh, uh, I just, I want anything on the page to essentially, I want the React components to be observing some data component. And maybe this UI changes that, and, it re and the React reacts to the change in the data. Um, I don't know. You would want either use Redux or make outer React class with state. I don't, definitely don't want to do that. I really hate pages that are React components. That seems so wrong to me. Um, it feels bad, man. <laughs> it feels bad, man. Okay, so if I were going to use Redux for this, well, that's not right. <laughs> React Redux. If I was going to use Redux for this, Let's say usage with React. I mean, all I want is a data store. Why do I even need something like Redux? If I'm not gonna be using the React model, why am I using React? That's what I'm starting to ask. Why am I using React? I haven't really taken advantage of anything I've, uh, uh, that React gives me. Um, I could just, I could essentially just completely remove this extends React component and just manually render it. And it, I mean, it's not giving me anything. I don't think it's going to give me anything for the life cycle of this website. Am I missing something? 
Um, I feel like I could just hand code this, just create my little framework and just hand code this without any major tie, tie downs to React, just using D3 and a little bit of scaffolding. I think I could do this cleaner. All right, well, maybe that's what I should do. I've been like trying to shove this application is into a React application because I want to keep up with like the rest of the JavaScript world, but it, it the shoe doesn't fit. I don't know. Um, I would like this to be mobile ready, but I think you can do a lot of that with CSS now. All of these diagrams are gonna to have to have a minimum width at some point. I'm gonna to have to decide a minimum width because they just, they just don't all work really small. Um, anyhow, um, now I gotta figure out what I wanna do because like my plans are falling apart. I don't want to force this into a React structure. I don't, I'm not doing this in a React way. It's weird that React doesn't fit this model. You'd think this would be common where you have a, a piece of data on a website that many things respond to changes of and the user's allowed to change it. And it could happen at any point in the website. All of the things in the web page need to respond to that, that object, that state changing. It seems React manages DOM creation, virtual DOM and render cycles. Yeah. Can use React hooks, no need for a class. Uh, I could do it, but it's top down. <clears throat> I'm I'm feeling I'm feeling like feeling iffy on React right now. Um, this is state of the parent object that is transmitted to its child. It is React. Well, that means I would have to create a React component for the whole page. Maybe that's the way to do it. That just feels like a weird thing to do. If I were to do that, it would be in the encoding numbers. So I would create a React component here, like not here, but you know, um, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> here. I would create a React component here and this is a React component, isn't it? Right? That's is so I could um I could do this. Okay, but is this possible? Should so one I, maybe I could force this maybe I could make this work. If I take this component did mount function and I override it at the page level uh like this. Of course, I have to turn this into like an actual uh, class. It's not the way I'm doing this probably isn't right. I have to turn it into a component. But if I made if I made a React page, and I had the component did mount, and then I did the scan for all the data tags, and used the and said all of the diagrams were my children. Is that the right way to go? Oh, you can't see the screen. Sorry. <laughs> uh, no, that is right. Share your screen. Yeah. Okay. So so I I will make like. At this point, at this point, the page at the page level. Right now, I'm just like inline exporting this this class, this function, or whatever. I'm going to pull that out and, and call it a React component a page, and that's what's going to return from here. Um, and then make it the parent, and in its component did mount. I'll scan the DOM. Uh, no, you just need to use state in the outer page level. So just like right here, I could I could add state here. What I want to do though, I want to have access to these, to, to anything. I want to basically add listeners to this, this DOM that I'm returning. Um, that's, and, and I, the way I was doing that earlier was from component did mount only runs once on startup. That's fine. That's exactly what I want. That's exactly what I want to have access to it after the DOM is loaded so that my React component can hook into, like I, my logic can hook into it. Because the reason I need it is because D3, I need to attach a D3 to those, to those things. Um, and in this case, this is a D3 selection and it's going, I'm gonna be calling it with any changes to drags. I'm attaching drags basically. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, yeah, class page name extends React component render. Okay, that's what I was, that's that's pretty much what I thought. And then, uh, and actually, we're going to call this. This is going to be encoding numbers. Extends React component and the render. Um, that's this down here. It's just going to return this. And then I just return this class, I imagine. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. And I just return this class. Export default. I don't know what the default means, but I'm, oops, I'm going to assume coding numbers. All right. So now I should be able to add my component did mount. These things. This is nasty to have these uh, code examples here. I'm not sure where to put them, but I'll figure out somewhere to make that better at some point. So component did mount. And this is where I can try this. Uh, what I was doing, where was I doing this? Yeah, I was doing it here and component did mount. This is this isn't really where I want to do it. This whole make scrubbable number thing shouldn't shouldn't be part of this class. It's gonna be part of the page. Okay. And then so I'm gonna to have to call into my children from the page encoding numbers. Uh, that's not what I want. No, that's Okay, this is not a diagram, so I'm gonna have to fix this. So this is, I'm gonna have to call this one for child. So I'm gonna call this child diagram. Let's, let's just call it diagram, because this is not a diagram. It's gonna be given the diagram. It's gonna have to go through its children. Um, okay, I was, I was totally not catching up with you. Hey, thanks for the help, David, uh, appreciate it. Uh, so, so yeah, so I'm putting the state in an outer class that that's for the page Trying to do this the react way. Sorry. Sorry about my rant a little bit earlier <laughs> Just get a little just get a little, It's hard to change man. It's just hard to change This is the way I've been programming for a long time and it's very hard to change and learn a new framework. It's Here's it's like it's like it's like breaking down a belief system and, and build and putting up something in place of it It's it's painful. It's uh It's rough Hmm. Uh, okay. Yeah, I um, love it when nerds use the word basically. Nerds! Um, default is for importing from other files, and you can just do it like this, dot state equals. Okay. We pass the children component the prop, referencing the outer state. All right. Keep checking the time. Uh, so let's make sure this is happening. Let's make sure we didn't break anything first of all. I just want to see this catch. I'm not sure that I've got everything right, so I wouldn't be surprised if something's broken. Um, let's see. Hey. Look at that, it's already caught. <laughs> yeah, so that worked. And it's not gonna attach anything, but everything rendered, so okay. So that that's good. We got a render and a component did mount. And so this is actually, so these children, I'm assuming now, maybe I'll come around, you guys. Maybe I'll come around and I'll be like, oh, React is the best thing ever. We'll see. So I, so I should have access to these children in my state or something like this, state. So, uh, or props, I can't remember. You pass it into the children component, the prop, referring to the outer state. Got it, got it, got it, got it, okay. So that's, um, that would be, uh, so I need a state, right? So I need a state in my encoding numbers. This is starting to make sense to me now. 
I need a state. I wanted a knit here because I'm going to give the page a state and it's going to be the state of the page is going to be all the different values that someone could change. Am I doing it right now? All the different values that someone could change. That'll be the state of the page. And as each one of those changes, I can call, I can um, update the, chi the children. Well, maybe it'll just work. But all I have to do then is make those things scrubbable. So I'll have something here that makes them scrubbable. I think I'm on the right track. You, you don't update the number from inside the child, do you? I don't think so. I don't think I'll do that. That was originally how I was gonna do it. I was gonna have each component totally self-contained and it have a UI components that would update itself. But I don't think I'm gonna do that anymore. I think I'm gonna make diagrams just readouts and any interactions will be something else. So all these diagrams will just be basically read-only D3 diagrams. Of course, there'll be hover interactions. Oh, there definitely has to be hover interactions. But that changes the internal state. Okay, let's assume right now that no. Let's assume now no. The child doesn't have to, the child doesn't update itself. That might change. Um, so the thing that changes the value when you slide is going to be this function, make scrubbable number. It's update numbers right here. So what we're doing here um, is for, e I haven't called this yet. This is what I'm going to do right here. So I'm going to call make scrubbable number. And so for each thing, and I, I don't have the states yet, so I'm not going to do it yet. Um, so, so, so the way that I've worked, it's worked so far. Um, oh, that's a good point. Um, how will React know? Because, because what what it's going to do is for each. Let's see. On drag, this is what happens. It calls. So this is where I get the value and set it right here. So I'm going to have access to a React component right here, and it's a, and it's property. So can I just set it the React way? But if, but if I have access to a child, I can set its state programmatically. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm going to catch. I'm going to use the D3 event handler. I'm going to catch the events. I'm going to get the value I want, and be within scope of the child I want to update. I can't do that. Why? So if I have an instance of a React component, I can't update its property. That seems weird. <clears throat> I think that's how I was doing it earlier, but from within, um, not outside the child. Props are read only. Okay, but the parent can set them, right? That, that you have to be the, because that's what, I thought that's what we were doing, is we're setting sort of like um, these values that the parent has. Oh. Oh, I get it. I get it. I get it. Um, I think I get it. Here, I'm looking in the wrong place, but here I have to set this to not 18 or 50, but to, um, I guess it would be this.w. Is that, do I have, is this the parent? I wonder. <laughs> yeah, I think so. So, so I would need to have an init function here and give it a property. Let's assume that the children don't upset them, update themselves for now and I'll, we'll figure out. I just want to get something that works right now. Something that works the way, the sim a simple way. Okay, super props. Um, I don't need an ID, none of this stuff. Now, I'm feeling like this isn't gonna work. Uh, okay. So here's, let me let me explain. Hey, are you, uh, Donald, are you up for a voice chat on Discord? I could, I could, I'm gonna join the live stream. I don't know how well this is gonna work, but I'm gonna join the live stream on Discord and uh, I think that's the URL if you want to join Discord. It's up to you. Um, 
that would be easier um, because I think I'm doing a couple key things that are wrong. But what I'm trying to do here is basically, I'm going to show you on on uh, the Red Blob Games page. So what I have here is a diagram, and, and let's say I've got seven of them. Like I, I might have them all throughout the page. Um, and I want any one of these triggers, this, this being one of the triggers. It could be one here, there could be one here. And a lot of his, let me show you a, a, an even better example of this is um, the hexagon grid reference. So if you watch this, each one of these triggers changes to the whole thing. Like there's triggers all over the place. There's triggers in the text, there's triggers beside the components, they could come from anywhere. And these are changing like global aspects of the diagram space and all the diagrams respond in, in, in appropriately. Um, that's what I'm trying to do. And I'm, so I'm saying that each one of these child diagrams essentially has its own state and, and it, but it also can respond to global state changes and it has, they have to re-render themselves when there's these global state changes. Um, so any one of these triggers, I, you can't see it, but all of these diagrams are changing when you do this. Every single one on the page is switching from one aspect to the other. Uh, Maybe you can't see it if I make it small enough. <laughs> yeah, see? Um, so this, that's what, I, that's what I want. I'm envisioning that um, because we're gonna have an HTM running and we're gonna have, uh, I wanna be visualizing, I want several diagrams to be visualizing it simultaneously. So we're gonna have one state on like for the page and it might be a big state. It could be like a cellular state. So thousands of values. And as it changes over time, I want these diagrams to update. All of them, um, or many of them on the page at once. Um, anyway, that's the, uh, that's the ideal that I'm trying to go for. And so if I were gonna do this in React, I imagine I'm gonna have to have one React component for the whole page each property that I will be able to flip between will be a property of that page component. Thanks, Donald. I really appreciate you trying this out. Um, I know you're, I know you're probably very busy. Um, so each one of these properties are going to be a property of the parent page and each, and when they change the parent needs to, or the children somehow need to re-render based upon that new value. The question was, are the children ever going to need to update their state directly, right? Or is the parent always going to control their state? Uh, this game page definitely uses D3. Yeah, this is a D3 heavy site. These are cool. I love this stuff. I don't know how this works. <laughs> Animations, obviously. Um, well, I can't imagine, D, if D3 doesn't work with React, then React doesn't work with anything. Why can't you? I mean, does React take total control of, of all user interaction? I didn't think that's what it did. I mean, there, there should be a way for me to do event handling in another system and hand off actions to React. Yeah, D D three manages its own DOM, for sure, because it's all and it's an SVG type of DOM. Um, maybe maybe I just can't do it. I can't do what I'm. Maybe React just doesn't make sense with D three components, because it does. It did seem like I was going against the grain when I was. Uh, creating that this this part here let me show you where it's going against the grain this part component did mount this is where i'm doing all my d3 magic is because i have to have access to the dom to do this because i need to see the orientation of the components so i know where exactly i'm going to 
scale things. So I must have the DOM um, after it's been laid out. Uh, yeah, this is why there's so many competing frameworks. Everybody thinks they have a better end all be all idea. So they create yet another framework. Well, there's no best idea so far. I've always created my own framework. I hate to say it. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> um, but this, this whole bit, like all my D3 stuff has to happen right here. And this is the root of everything. I mean, it like D3 is like after React does its thing, D3 comes in and picks a bunch of hooks in and changes a bunch of stuff. So I'm thinking, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, okay, so David, there is, uh, oh, there you are, hi. Let's see, so uh, there is a voice channel option down uh, there's text channels and then there's voice channels. You have to, yeah, it, the, I gave a link earlier. Um, here, here it is. Is that it? I'll do it again. So once you, if you follow that link, you sh oh, you're in the page. I can see you. Hello. Hi. <laughs> so come to, uh, there's a voice channel. How do I share this connection? Bottom left. Yeah, there's two icons. It's like voice and uh... now I'm stuck. I don't know where I am. Oh wait, I can show it. Maybe you can see this. This is the Discord. This is what it looks like. I'm right here. You're in the oh, you're in the general. Not in general. Go into live stream. There you go. Hello. Can you hear me? I can't hear anything yet. I think you're muted. I've only got 20 minutes, you guys, and I gotta go because I gotta pick my kids up and I have to turn this and I have to I have other work I have to do. Um, so I think you're very close, hopefully, because I can see you right here. There you are, right there, DDoc003. So you, uh, uh, you almost got there. You're in the wrong voice channel. Now you want to go in the live stream voice channel. Maybe I shouldn't have made two voice channels. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you're so close. And then uh, our Vino Wise is also in the voice channel, but he looks muted. Uh, show the icons. I don't have any icons. I think this probably looks different in Mac OS and uh, Windows. I don't know. So hopefully figure out how to get in there. I so I'm thinking, um, I just keep thinking maybe I shouldn't use React. Maybe I should look this up. I, I swear I did at some point. Hello. Yeah, I see you. No, you don't, don't, don't call. Go to the, <laughs> there you are. Now you're in the voice channel. I can hear something. Say something. Here, you can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right. Do you get a bad echo or anything? No, I turned the volume down on me. Okay, cool. Uh, all right, so hopefully you can still see my stream. So do you do you understand what I'm trying to do? Maybe just give me a perspective on what do you think is going on right now? <laughs> all right, what do you think I should do? So you basically state that that's a page level that you want to control. I want the users to control. Yeah, I, I want. So you want. You want to control it from within uh, a subcomponent because you want to wrap the diagram into a reusable component. Uh, yeah, like there's some, but maybe. But I'm thinking. I'm thinking about um, pulling all the controls away from the diagrams entirely. So if all of the diagrams are just React components and they're just display, like you said, they're just read only. They don't change anything. If I can do it that way, that's a better model to take, right? And then how would you update? The diagram. So then my um, so then the pay at the page level I would have um, I would have uh, that make scrubbable thing that I was doing I, I would I would try and attach some logic to the pieces of the, the basically the input pieces I'm gonna have like I want to have little sliders and little bitty input components where people can change a value. Um, okay. Yeah. So, so that that slider would then call 
set state on the page level to update the state variable. Oh, okay. And it props to the dice. Okay. So does that mean, so let me show you it. Does that mean that, uh, so this is my page encoding numbers. Uh, so this is the class for the page. Does that mean that I would actually instantiate an instance of the class and, and then in some event handler? So where do I put the event handler basically uh, that's gonna set the state on this page? Put it on whatever you're using to, for the driver. So like if you're using a slider or something on the on change event of that same page as this, and then you would just call this dot set state, which is a function that comes with. Oh, okay. So assuming the slider itself is also a React component. You, you, uh, well, you can just use a regular HTML element or just a React wrapper this, component. It doesn't matter. But here's what I want to use: just a data tag. That that's the only thing that's going to identify. Let me show you. Uh, what this is the the markup I want. Oh crap! Where did it go? Sorry. Um, it was in the rain. Uh, here it is. This is essentially it. Um, and it's just a number, and I want an interaction where with somebody, uh, and uh, and I want to build the interaction myself. So the interaction based on this, anything with data tag name n, essentially, um, gets converted into uh, this little scrubbable number that you can drag. And that's what this does. And it's, it's a D3 drag. So I'm doing a D3 interaction at this point. Now, I have the ability to get access to the, ch the child component that, I'm, um, that I want this to affect. But that doesn't, no, that's, this is going to change a, a page state value, right? So this wouldn't, yeah. I, I wouldn't touch any diagrams here. So I wouldn't need the diagram here. All I, all I really would need is uh, the, the value. You, you basically need to disconnect the drag of something. Yeah. Outside on the page. So yeah. That, and then each place on the page, you would just replace that with like an expression for the state variable things controlling that state variable with a set state. Um, wh where, are you sa where are you saying the expression should be with the state variable? Go back to the page that you're looking at, like in the fig caption, where you want that like n to update anytime. Oh, right. Um, yeah, this bit. <clears throat> yeah, that's being just uh, a span with an ID on it. A oh. span and inside the value of the span, you would do like curly braces and then uh, this dot state, whatever the name of that variable. And then that would automatically update whenever that. Oh, okay. Um, you mean, okay, let me let me break this out so I know what you're saying. Cause uh, I think I'm starting to get this. So let's say. Um... So the first step would be to put at, in the in the top of this class right here, you would need to add a state variable. And simple scalar encoder, or or you're saying at the very top of the, the page numbers. class encoding numbers, yeah. Um, yes. So do do I, should I even be using a constructor here, or does React should I, I don't not? Need a constructor. Okay. So where do I put the state variable then? A, a class level state variable? Oh, oh. Or outside of it, like this type of page level. This, so the like on line one fifteen. Mm -hmm. Do you need that stuff to happen? when the page is constructed or do you need that the stuff they just deleted uh, i didn't need that stuff at all I, honestly <laughs> uh, on like well then now on line 116 you have to put this in the class itself so right here i can i can make state variables like uh n equals so 10 or 100 this dot state oh this dot state equals oh no yeah yeah, yeah. Or you can just say state equals depending on your. And this is a is there it should is there a good document that I should be looking at for this type of thing, because this seems really uh, simple. Yeah, you can just go go right to the React page, and they have super easy tutorials and stuff to follow. Seems like I should have done this. I did some, and I must have missed something, but especially state component state. Is that what we're talking about here? Set state, state, state versus props. Okay, 
So when I create a class, it, I, I just, I'm not familiar with the type of magic that React does in, in JavaScript, you know what I mean? What it does, yeah, what it does is it manages the DOM, basically. It keeps a copy of a called a virtual DOM. Yeah. So that it only re-renders objects and, and only makes deltas anytime something's changed and it only renders just those differences. So it makes it very performant. Yeah. But they have to have control over the DOM. Okay, yeah. So when I create a component like this that represents the page and I and I have a access to a state uh, a state variable, um, that is basically however I was created and I can add to it right here. So uh, on this line, you would basically initialize it to whatever you want it to be. So instead of being like n state dot n dot one hundred, it would be state equals an object with n as a property. Oh, one hundred. Okay. Uh, okay. And this that ma that makes sense, and that's where I'll have an n or a w is is ten, and an n is a hundred. Uh, okay. Do I need the let here? Because it's a it's a member. Of because it's a member of the class. Okay. All right. All right. Okay, cool. But again, so this is React, so it kind of goes through a top-down uh -huh. approach. So instead of saying this state dot w equals, then I have to call set state. state. You have to call set, and that's asynchronous too. Gotcha. I mean, you can pass it. Back, but, but first off, I so want to use I this right here. I want to say this dot state dot w right. Oh, right. I'm sorry, it's the lag. Okay. That, and then you would also do that, yep. And then you'd also do that in the span the captions, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's great. Okay. That's actually really helpful. So I can see how I would do, how I could use this a page. So I can see how a React component, I can treat that. It didn't make sense to me to make the page a React component because I always think about widgets and, you know, very modular components. Uh, but I can see how. I could give behavior to the entire page in the way that I want to give behavior to for behavior to react like this page. You know what I mean? Uh, so that makes sense. Okay, let me try and work through this. I got ten more minutes. If I can get it actually working, I would be really happy. And I really appreciate you jumping in and helping out. That's very cool of you. Um, so I could I should be able to shove this into the spans as well. wherever they are, it's a lot of places. And then um, here's the span. So this span, all right, so I'm gonna put this back. <laughs> and here I'm gonna put this, whoops, not that. This.state.w in per in curly brackets. Do you need a span there or? Uh, yeah. Right, I think so. Oh no, no, not not here. This isn't what I wanted. This isn't what I wanted. This is going to be. You in. don't even need a span at all. Well, no, the span is the span is used. I'm using it in D3 as a trigger for scrubbing the number across. But I want I want to start out with W here. I mean, I'm I'm still planning on. Uh, I think. When you. But when you update, if you update it through D3, that's not going to update the set state unless you have like an event handler for changes of D3. If I update this through D3, so, so okay, so here's, I guess this is the other problem I have to deal with here. Um, I want to be able to add D3 event handlers to things. Mm -hmm. um, so what's the right way to do that? If it's, because uh, I'm doing it right now by selecting well, it doesn't have to be a span, but something with a data name. You know, it's this. I'm selecting on this data name equals n, and I'm and I'm attaching you know event handlers to when that changes, or when something hovers over that. You know, uh, and that's all in D3, and I don't know how else to do it. Yeah, if I if I was, I would, as much as possible, use just D3 for the for the display portion of it and any interactions with it and it would have to be in the page itself outside of it mm -hmm. and then on on depending on how you hover to actually change the state of the parent component that it'll be an issue 
crap. For like displaying, you know, what the value is for yeah. updating, just updating inside that D3 DOM. That's fine. But if you need to update something outside of it. Okay, I got you. That, I got that's you. That's fine. You yeah. can handle that event by passing an event handler into the diagram. Mm-hmm. So that you would pass would say set state. That's okay. not very conventional, but doing that. So, so like simple scalar encoder, if you needed to handle on hover, mm -hmm. you would pass in an on hover into there, uh, like an arrow function. Function would say this dot set state. So, okay, hold, hold that thought for a moment because I think that might be useful. Uh, but but this is this is what you told me to do earlier, and I think this makes sense to me now, right? This dot state dot w just to put those right in line there. Okay, and and the other thing you said when when I'm creating this, I could add an on hover or something. Uh, so you basically have to pass that down into so the component simple scalar encoder would take any type of custom event handlers that you want uh -huh. to happen, and then that inside that component would pass that handler down into the D3 component. Okay. For that would call the handle that you passed in as a property for a simple scale. Whew. I'm gonna have to think about this a little bit. I'm I'm still trying to figure out if it's worth it trying to um, put D3 and React together because the D3 um, event handling and the D3 and the rest of D3 are really tied together. Um, have you checked to see if there's a D3 React component? I'm sure there is. Uh, no. I haven't. Hold on. I will. React JS D three data visualization. I so I read this, but it didn't help me that much. Data visualization React using React D three. Um. Yeah, this was. Just totally basic. It didn't. Um, it it gave me this bit. Component did mount. I figured that out, and so that's where I would attach. That's where I would get the DOM to do my React stuff. But that's about it. It didn't go too far from there. And this wasn't like. A, it's not a React component, you know. I don't think it's in. But it tells you how to create, how to turn it into a component. Um, but I don't see any. I don't think I saw any interactions in this. Uh, react dash d3 dash library dash d3 dash library uh huh okay javascript library that allows developer the ability to use react and or d3 and react this looks promising okay let's see <laughs> um rd3 uh, let's see some Example, uh, this doesn't have anything to do with React, is it? Oh, they're going to change it, it. It's written in React. Oh, wait, which one are you looking at? I was looking at this. This example doesn't have anything React. I think it's just the D3. And then they're going to show you how to. Okay. Yeah, see, it's basically doing the same thing. You're going to pass the state into, but you're still going to manage it from outside of it. Okay. So this D3, it's giving you this. Okay, I think I can do this. I think I can use this, right? But the only thing I want to make sure is, is is I want to make sure I'll be able to um, data filter enter the, all this stuff worked. It was it was the interactions that I had, that I had problems with because like when so some some of the way that React works is um, like when you drag. Uh, this is the this was the example that screwed everything up. I think uh, this makes scrubbable thing. So you you create a selection. Here, you, you select all the things you want. And then um, when, when you have the elements later, you, you call this function called call on it and you send it the interaction that you 
are want to so it's a, it's a weird it's sort of a weird programming interface um, I don't know that it matches very well and this may be just an extreme use case that I'm trying to do right away and it just doesn't fit I'm not sure I'll have to I'll have to look closer at this though and I don't have time to but I really appreciate you jumping on and helping point me in the right direction you see how you said in that uh on the drag handle where you said update numbers? Uh, yes. Yes. Number two. What was that? Numbers two. I still missed it. But what does the update numbers function do? Oh, um, so this in, this just updates the number in the span or in the in the originating you know event label. Instead of doing that, you would just you would pass in a set state handler basically into this component, and instead of saying update numbers on line one forty one, you would just call that prop. You would say like this dot props. Ah, uh, oh okay, and that so. And then and that would automatically cascade and update the whole page. Okay, so so you think I can I can do what I want to do based on using this component library? I mean, with what you have now, I don't even think you need the the library you were just looking at. You could you could. If that's the only issue, you just need to handle the interaction. Yeah. Then you can just pass that pass that into it. So I'll, so I'll basically define the interaction outside of it, and then and then pass it yeah, in as, as just, to do it like that. You can you can just pass in like a like a generic update state to I, this component. And and do you mean? as I like here at this level, is that what you're talking about? Am I sharing my screen? Okay. I'm become at a loss. Uh, yeah, so that makes scrubbable stuff. Is that in encoding numbers or is that in simple scalar encoding? It could be in either place. Honestly, I don't care. <laughs> right now it's in encoding numbers. Well, then all you need to do is line and go to the the drag handler that you were just at uh yeah that was way up here i think this is where i kept it yeah and right here this draggy thing this is all this whole thing's the drag handler essentially instead of saying uh update numbers you would just say this dot set state right but but how do I get this function into the component? That's I send it in when I initialize it, and I say, "Here's your handler." But what it's it's its handler for what? Uh, you would just keep that at the page level. I'll make scrubbable number inside the component didn't mount. That will basically register the handlers. Oh. Uh, okay. So so I'm not gonna. Yeah pass it down and then the diagram would up I'm still missing something I'm sorry yeah I, it's confusing as okay well. so I um I, I gotta go I'm sorry to cut you off uh, I'd love to sit here and keep working on it but I gotta pick my kids up from school <laughs> this uh committed like uh I'll put it in a branch um I'm almost sort of committed so why don't I just put it in a branch real quick where am I not that one Okay, it's sort of half. So get check out branch. Uh, what am I working on? Um, React React D three interaction. Okay, components pages uh, some. Let's put not working yet. <laughs> Get push origin react d3 interaction. So that should be in my fork over here. Sorry about the noise. Okay, there's the link if anybody wants that fork. 
David, you go for it. If you see something that you can help help me with, go for it. I'm open to any help. And I will be back online uh, Monday morning. So I'll see you guys Monday morning. Um, I'm going to skip the raid because I got to I got to head out. So uh, thanks everybody, and and take care. Have a great weekend. Happy Friday. Thanks for joining me on, on my work um, and my passion, understanding the brain. <laughs> take care.